<laughs> UMC. My name is Evie, and it is my joy to worship with you today. You might have noticed that you are surrounded by young people this morning. It is Youth Sunday. We'll be leading worship, passing the plates, even preaching for you today. We hope you like it. I would love to know that you are here today. For those of you in the house today, please sign in on a blue binder book being passed around. For our friends online, you can like, comment on the streaming video, follow, or subscribe. We want to know that you are part of our community and worship. If you are a guest, welcome. Please come by our welcome center after worship, and we can share more information about the life of the church and meet you. Would you please stand with me and sing our first hymn, Easter People Raise Your Voices. how to do everything from running sound to being an usher to leading us in music and in prayer. We're so thankful, parents and grandparents and church members, that you came to support them as they have learned these things from your leadership. Please join me for the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word come back, we may hear your joy with what you said to us today. Amen. from Psalm 100. On your feet now, applaud God. Bring a gift of laughter. Sing yourself, Sing yourself into his presence. presence. Know this, God is God. He made us. We didn't make him. We are his people, his well-tend sheep. Enter with the password, thank you. Make yourselves at home, talking praise. Thank him, worship him. For God is sheer beauty. 
all generous in love, loyal always and ever. Let us worship God with joy. Thus ends the first reading. Can you do a prayer for the family? Uh, Shirley Rodriguez and Larry Johnston. Prayer for Sarah's to be lifted up to be filled with the splendor and glory of your splendor. God of all generations, past, present, and future, what a wonderful day of new life and resurrection. We are so glad to be worshiping with you today. You are a God who has always made things new, yet at the same time brings hope and love and grace and mercy stretch from before time began and through eternity. Fill our hearts with wonder. We pray that we might see and feel and know some bit of how awesome and amazing you are. God, you know the feelings that are troubling us. Be with the sick and those who have lost loved ones. Bring healing to the world, Lord. We plan to live a long life, and we want to. We want life to flourish. We believe you want to save. We thank you deeply for all the great blessings you give us every day. Thank you for the exuberance of youth, the steadiness of the middle ages of life, and the wisdom that comes from years of experience. Thank you for differences and diversity and the love you give us that unifies us. We pray all this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. First Timothy 4, 8 through 12. While physically training has some value, training in holy living is useful for everything. It has promise for this life now and the life to come. This saying is reliable and deserves complete acceptance. We work and struggle for this. Our hope is set on the living God who is the savior of all people, especially those who believe. Command these things, teach them. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young. Instead, set an example for the believers through your speech, behavior, love, faith, and by being sexually pure. For the people of God. Harper. Um, today's youth sermon is about pen pals. Um, basically, my life here, um, I started here when my, well, when I was born, obviously. But me, um, Kiki, and Jaylee, those two will also be preaching later today if you want to stay and watch them. I suggest you should. Um, all came around the same time. It was very funny. There was a joke with our parents because they all got pregnant at the same time, 
that don't go into their um, room, you'll get pregnant and come out like with another baby, blah, blah, blah. It was this whole thing. Um, about when I was like five-ish, I think, I got diagnosed with a illness called pandas. Um, it, it's basically where the white blood cells can't tell the difference between strep and your body. So it would attack my brain cells instead of the strep attached. So I had fun with that. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, when I was, I think about eight, I left the church for a good three, four years. Um, but the church I went to, I loved it so much. They unfortunately shut down because they didn't have enough funds after COVID hit. Um, so I came back, and I'm so grateful I came back. I love this church so much. Um, yeah, so today, <laughs> obviously, pen pals. Um, basically, when I was in um, cheer, I love cheer. I've always wanted to do cheer. There is this tradition where you create pins, like clothes pins, and you basically decorate them, and you put affirmations on there like you got this don't forget to smile on the mat all sorts of things and you would go up behind people and you would pin them on their bow their backpack their shoes and it's just a big surprise to them it is such a fun tradition that we did and I decided last year to bring it into the church so when I went to camp I brought a bunch of pins but instead of affirmations, I wrote Bible verses. I pinned people. Those people saw it, and then they pinned everyone else. And it just became this big cycle and this big, fun journey of trying to figure out who you're going to pin, who's getting pinned, what your pin says. And I actually have a few friends that are going to come and do a little um, skit about it. It's really fun. While I am finishing this up, they are going to go around and pass out all of the pins that they have to you. So if you would wait and then they're going to hand out the pins. Okay. Um, while they're doing that, I just want to um, say thank you for coming. Um, before you leave, um, I know this is in the middle, so you're probably not going to remember, but there is a table right outside of the sanctuary in between those two doors that have clothespins on them, in, on the table. If you would like to decorate a clothespin with, like, an affirmation or a Bible verse, feel free, take it, and give it to a random person you see on the street. It's, it's very fun. It's inspiring, and I feel like it's just going to make someone's day. You never know what someone's going through. They could have the worst day in history that they've ever had, and you could make them smile, and that's just something I love to see. So, thank you. That, that was my sermon. I don't know how to finish it. You know, it's just how it goes. Thank you, Bethany. As we prepare to sing our hymn of invitation. The invitation today, we have moved our noisy offering to the first Sunday of the month. Typically, we're in the last Sunday of the month, but because it's children and youth and scouts and all of these young people today, we want to invite you to help us in this special offering while we sing. As students come around with the buckets, we're, all of the money that we collect this morning in the loose change offering will go to help our No Scout Left Behind account for our Girl Scout Troop 798. Each summer they have opportunities to grow and learn and develop and we make sure that money isn't the reason that kids don't get to go to camp. And so um, I, I encourage you to stand and sing with joy to give generously as we take this offering. Will you stand as you are able, in body or spirit, to join us in the hymn of promise? <laughs>
something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity, in our And join us and join me as we join together in proclaiming our beliefs by resurrecting the historic confession of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and upon the Lord, was crucified and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, and ascended into heaven, and so the Lord of God Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. to set up an online gift or even reoccurring giving. Go to our webpage at morechurch.com slash giving or mail to More First United Methodist Church at 201 West Main Street, Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. Today, the youth invite you to consider making an additional gift to scholarship children and youth attended summer camp. Camp for Kids entertain entertaining first grads through graduating high school. This church has a goal of paying, or, yeah, this, goal, this church has a goal of paying for half of each camper and send safe adults to go with us. Visit our tent in the lobby to make a support tag to go with your gift. Let us pray. Lord, who is generous to us with your love, accept our gifts and these tithes to be blessed in your kingdom. Amen. Hello. So I'm going to introduce a cool video. We have a video to share with you. In February, we hosted a movie night here at the church, and we watched What Rhymes With Reason. So Kyle Roberts, the director of the movie, he reached out to me and asked to do interviews with some of our youth and some of our leaders. So we are happy to share that, and I hope you enjoy it. What I really love about What Rhymes With Reason is that it really emphasizes all the different struggles that youth experience today. I thought it was like a really nice movie because it like highlights things that 
like actually being able to go through it and it's not like just something dodging the point. It's really hard to find media with that type of like topic and lessons it's trying to teach in a good way because usually it's not done well or it's not done in a way that people can relate to. That it wasn't all up in your face like a lot of movies are or shows whereas this it kind of um, showed the positive side that you can get out of it and that it's not just a negative thing. I mean a lot of people can relate to it and they can feel like they're not in this alone. It's important that we bring it to the church. Sometimes people get afraid of if we start talking about it, is that going to make people think about it? But that's probably the most common myth when it comes to suicide. We have to keep talking about it. We have to keep being open about it. We have to keep um, reminding everybody that it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to talk about it because um, you can't suffer in silence. You have, you have to have people doing things together. We are better together. What Rhymes With Reason is a great movie to show for the community. It's family friendly. It's got entertainment, it's funny, it's, you know, it's got its sad moments, of course, and it's very uplifting. And I think it's a very powerful movie that churches should be showing. You know, it's really relatable, and I think maybe if you watch it that you'll see that you're probably not the only one going through some stuff, and that other people can relate, and if you open up, you can, like, get that help. What I really, Christ our Lord invites to his table who all love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to leave, live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us in the name of Jesus Christ. You are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, Almighty, Almighty Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And when we turned away and our love failed, 
your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, O God, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness and into this marvelous light. For this, we remember the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us. Gathered around a table, he took this bread and he gave thanks to you, God, and then he offered it to the disciples and he said, take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you eat this, remember me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, again giving thanks to God and offering this to all, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. And so it is in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Oh God, pour your Holy Spirit out on all who are gathered here and these gifts of bread and juice and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Jesus. Make us one with each other. Make us one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at a heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us be so bold to say, to say what Jesus taught us and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give it us this day our daily bread. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. This morning, ushers will guide you forward to these stations where you will receive a piece of bread and a small cup of grape juice. If you need gluten-free, that station is here. You just let those servers know you need gluten-free. We keep that part separate. And if you are not comfortable walking to the front, there's a server who will come to you. You can just remain seated. Some may come forward this morning for a blessing instead of to receive communion. If you'll just put your hands on your heart let me know that you'd like a blessing instead. As those who are serving this morning are youth leaders, they've been training with our communion team for how to do this, about what it means 
to receive the joy and the celebration and the solemn act of Jesus' gift for us. And so come with joy. Come with prayer. Um, you're invited to come and receive and kneel and stay at the prayer rails as long as you wish. Um, we continue an ancient tradition in the church, those who would leave alms at the rail. Those alms are directed to help prevent homelessness and hunger um, with our neighbors, to help make sure the lights are on and that people are safe and have plenty um, to survive. And so those gifts will be directed to the alms fund today. The table is open and you are invited to come. Let us pray. 
Oh God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you give yourself to us. And we pray that the grace that is gifted to us would grow in our lives, making us more holy, more like you, making us understand this world and your work in it. Help us to be blessings to one another as our students have been blessings to us today in this worship service. And remind us, oh God, that we're not just Christians in this room, but confirmation and baptism and now communion reminds us that we are transformed from the inside out. So receive us now as we pray in the hope of resurrection in this life and the life to come. Amen. Join and stand me. Stand and join me in singing. Christ is risen, number 307. resurrection where you can't quite yet see it blooming. And one of those things is I'd like to invite you today to join us at 4 p.m. for our next in the Emotional and Relational Health series. Our panelists, uh, speakers, there'll be I think three or four. I I'd like to invite you to come at 4 p.m. because one of our own, Dr. Keenan Smart, is going to join us in leading the conversation around teen anxiety and depression whether you are a teenager, have a teenager, know a teenager, or think you might ever spend time in a room with one, this is for you. Okay? And it's an excellent continuing conversation around us understanding a real global health crisis found in our own zip code is mental illness and the lack of support that people feel in that and the isolation that comes with it. Please come to learn about that with us today. In addition, we had um, a meeting, uh, our pastor and the leader of our emotional and relational health team, Audrey, had a meeting with the more public schools counseling professionals, and we asked them in the course of that time, how can we help you? Because we want to be in service to the world. 
And they said, well, no one's ever asked us that before. And so they said, you know, what would really help is when students come to our office needing services and assistance, if they had just like a snack or a juice box, or just, let's make sure the first needs are met, that they're not hungry in need of that. And so we're collecting snacks um, that are individually wrapped, store-bought. I know you want to bake cookies. You can bring those to my office. And, <laughs> and kid-friendly. But small bottles of water, juice boxes, those sorts of things. You can bring them to the church and leave them at the welcome centers. You can bring them to the office if the offices are open. Um, and we will make sure those get to the school counselors. In addition, um, next Saturday, April the 13th, we are gathering in this room at 9 a.m. for our Safe Sanctuaries training. If you are a volunteer with children, youth, vulnerable adults, if you are a staff member, this is mandatory. If you're a community member, you're welcome. It is free, and you can come and join as we learn about how we work all the time to keep our most vulnerable safe. Um, if you have registered, we got that. I think the registration is closed now, but you are still welcome to come. There'll be a brunch, and, and we want you to be part of this training. And next Sunday, we begin our new sermon series, uh, The Last Finish Line, How to Learn How to Be People Who Live in the Resurrection. Methodists are people who live in such a way that they're not afraid to die. Because we know that this life has prepared us for the next. And so I hope you'll join us in this three-week series as we practice building team together, supporting one another, and living a life that is holy in Jesus' footsteps. And now... We send you forth from this place with a blessing. May God shine upon you. May you recognize the Holy Spirit at work in you. May you have eyes to see God moving and shaking and changing and healing the world around you. And may we find dignity and hope in this life that we live from our youngest to our most senior. For every day is a blessing. Go in peace today.